Welcome everyone to Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Beechler, and this is the third weekend of September. And before we get started, a quick update upon the line fire. Uh, as most of you know, the line fire was burning pretty close to our church, probably within two miles. Uh, you go up in 18, look down a couple days ago and just saw a wall of flames uh, down at 3.30. And then the fire burned all the way up to Running Springs and the fire department was able to stop it right there. It was quite the battle. Uh, on the official report, they talked about a little miracle that took place. Uh, a rogue thunderstorm happened right as they were making that stand. And they were about ready to leave and the thunderstorm came and uh, put down the flames. Uh, that was an official report uh, last night I was listening to. And the uh, fire got within probably 150 yards of our school in Running Springs, or all the way up uh, right next to it. Uh, in the past few days, we've been trying to help people out. We've opened up our church and ministry center to those who need a place to stay. And we have uh, two families been living here and they've been supporting those who had to evacuate that uh, don't have a lot of money, uh, helping them with food and with hotel room. Uh, so we're trying to do a lot to uh, serve our community and continue to uh, preach Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, today's sermon online is going to be about prayer in the Gospel of John and uh, the prayer life of Jesus and how we are to have this prayer life also through faith in him. So let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for protecting our mountain. We thank you for the hard work of all the firemen and forest service and hot shots and sheriffs and so many other people working to preserve our community. We ask that you would keep them safe uh, be with us now as we worship, and let us come to you in prayer whenever situations look dire. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
now stand for our opening preparation for worship. We begin our time of worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remembering we are your baptized people. But as we think about our baptism, we must think about our sin, which made baptism necessary. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We take a moment of silent confession. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear now the good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore announce the forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are part of a grace-filled community, and so now we extend that grace to one another in person or in line with the peace of the Lord. John chapter 17, Jesus' high priestly prayer. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. 
Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all flesh, to give eternal life to all those you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the one and only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth, having accomplished the work you have given me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I have had before you and before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and have come to know the truth, that I came from you, and they have believed you, sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. All of mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and have come to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now make our confession of faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. What do we believe in? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, you will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we continue our sermon series on the Gospel of John, and we're going to take a little detour here on the online service and talk about the Gospel of John and the basics of prayer. As you read the Gospel of John, notice all the little prayers that are being said by Jesus and other people. Prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of gratitude, prayers of need. And that's what we've been doing very hard here at Mount Calvary uh, with the fire so close. We have been in a lot of prayer and so have thousands of people on the mountain. And again, as I said at the beginning, you don't think prayer really matters. We've been praying. And again, that fire came right up to Running Springs. The firemen, I was told, were very, very nervous, thinking about, is it time to get out of here? And a thunderstorm came, and it poured down rain and hail, and that rain helped the firefighters to stop the fire right behind Running Springs. One house was lost and we pray for that family and their loss. Uh, The wife was on TV and she's very distraught with her kids and her husband has cancer. But again, as she prays, God's people will come and minister to her and help her to rebuild her life. So prayer is an important part of Jesus's ministry and our ministry. And we're going to open up with a little video about one kind of prayer.
giving thanks. Just one of the prayers you'll see in the Gospel of John. So let's talk about prayer for life. Prayer that was in Jesus' life and prayer that is to be in your life. And there are different kinds of prayer that we should practice every single day. And when I say practice, it is practice. It is something that we learn to do better and better the more we do it. Uh, quite often I hear people say, I could never pray out loud. And my answer is, yeah, you can. It just takes a little practice. Uh, I didn't start running uh, long distances until I was in my early 50s. Don't like running still, but I've been able to run um, marathons and half marathons and all kinds of runs because of practice. And I can run them a lot faster, but I don't practice enough. Uh, Andrew Murray said this, reading a book about prayer, listening to lectures and talking about it is very good, but it doesn't teach you to pray. You are getting nothing without exercise, without practice. I might listen for a year to a professor of music, play the most beautiful music, but that won't teach me to play an instrument. We need practice. And so this is what this sermon is about, showing how Jesus prayed and how we are to pray this way, to practice that we might finish our race. We may not finish it well, we might finish last, I usually finish near the end, but we will finish the race. So let's get into the Gospel of John and see Jesus in prayer. And the first prayer that we are called to do every day is what's called intercessory prayer, praying for others. And in our Gospel lesson, John chapter 17, we see a Jesus' great high priestly prayer. And it is an intercessory prayer much of the way. From John 17, 9, I ask on their behalf, he's interceding. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but of those whom you gave me, for they are yours. You might want to read John chapter 17 again to see this beautiful prayer of Jesus as he intercedes for us, for our ministry every single day. And then as Jesus prays for us, we are to pray for other people, to have intercessory prayer before God on the behalf of others. If you don't know who to pray for, again, pray for firemen, pray for forest service workers, pray for sheriffs, uh, pray for all the people that are trying to keep this mountain safe. Pray for your friends, pray for your neighbors. You can go on and on. And so uh, there's a little idea that I've read about prayer, that prayer is like following a rabbit. And so you pray for this person and suddenly think about that person. And then you think about this need and you think about that need over there. And you just kind of wander around in your prayers, praying for all these different things that come into your mind. That is good intercessory prayer. So who needs prayer support tonight, right now? Is it a friend, a neighbor, a family member, a nation, a ministry, a family grieving, a whole mountain that is in fear because of fires. For those that have lost so much in these fires around Southern California, you could spend 24 hours a day in intercessory prayer. That is not the problem, not knowing what to pray for, just how to stop. But this is Jesus' calling in the Gospel of John. He prays for us, and we pray for other people. Another part of prayer in the Gospel of John are prayers of gratitude. And I like this quote. It's not happiness that brings us gratitude. It's gratitude that brings us happiness. The more we can thank God for the many blessings in our life, the more content we will be. And often we forget about how blessed we are living in this time with all of the stuff that we have. I was uh, listening to somebody talk about how uh, 2,000 years ago and before in Jesus' day, you could be the richest person in the nation. You could have tons of gold and silver. But if a famine came, your money wasn't going to save you. 
There was always times when there was never enough. And we have an abundance. And so we are to be grateful people. And we see Jesus being grateful in John chapter 7 at when Jesus calls Lazarus from the grave. And they took some stones away. And Jesus looked up and said, I thank you, Father. Gratitude. I thank you, Father, that you have listened to me. And take a look at that picture. Maybe uh, get up co close to your phone or to your iPad. And look at the faces of the people as they see a dead man coming back to life again. And they hear Jesus giving thanks to the Father. I know that you listen to me, and I say this for the sake of the people here, so they will believe that you sent me. And he said in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus comes out, Jesus giving gratitude and thanks. And so joyful voices of praise leap out all through the Old and New Testament. And if you need help with attitudes of praise, go to the end of the Psalms. The last 20, 30 Psalms are beautiful Psalms of gratitude, like Psalm 150. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the mighty heavens. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. So what are you grateful for? Again, just you could take all day giving intercessions for people. You could spend all day in gratefulness to God. Food, clothing, friends, family, having God's word in your own language, freedom of worship. I could go on and on and on. We have much to be grateful for. And I like this little quote, gratitude turns what we have into enough. Gratitude changes us. So we give thanks and we give gratitude to God. And then the next part of prayer in the book of John are the prayers to praise God. I praise you as long as I live in your name. I will lift up your hands. And we see a great, great example of praising God in the Gospel of John on Palm Sunday. As Jesus rides into Jerusalem, the people say, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. They are in praise and adoration of the Messiah coming. And so we too have so much to be grateful for, even when life is hard. And the book of Job shows us a person praying in gratitude when they have lost everything, when they've lost all of their children to sudden death, when they've lost their health, when they've lost all of their possessions, everything is gone. And look what Job says. Then Job arose and he rent his robe and shaved his head and fell upon the ground in worship saying, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I shall return. The Lord gave, the Lord is taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We always have something to praise God for. And so Jesus is often in the synagogue every Sunday, worshiping God, praising his name. As Isaiah 25 states, Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and praise your name. For in the perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. And so again, what can you praise God for this day? We can always praise him for the precious blood of Jesus, our Savior. And then the last prayer that you see scattered through the Gospel of John are prayers of confession as people meet Jesus. Lord, be away from me, I'm a sinner said Peter. And so our prayer life needs confession every day. And confession, according to small catechism, has two parts. First, we confess our sins, and second, we receive absolution, that is, forgiveness from the pastor as from God himself, not doubting but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. 
And so this part of prayer, it basically has taken out the trash. And uh, you've been to a house where the people living there, nobody's taken out the trash. It just piles up and piles up and stinks up the place. That can happen to us daily. We come to God and confess to him our sins. And he takes our sins away. And he burns them up in his powerful love on the cross. And you're thinking, well, what does that have to do with Jesus and the Gospel of John? Well, here's a, a quote from Martin Luther. Either sin is with you, lying on your shoulders, or it is lying on Christ, the Lamb of God. And where does this Lamb of God idea come from? Again, from the Gospel of John. John of the beginning, the gospel begins with this description of Jesus from John the baptizer. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And so as we make confession, we remember this Jesus. And there's one final thought I want to put into your mind as you go into prayer. Before you pray, read the Bible. Let the Bible verses influence your prayers. You see, these different prayers are wrapped with the cord of God's word. And again, reading before we pray is how we are to live this out. Uh, this one author said, after the input of a passage of scripture, meditate on how it has taken what God has given you and think deeply, digest, and then speak to God about with meaningful prayer. And so we read God's word first. God speaks first. And then we pray and speak back to God. I like this quote. Now what is food for the inner person? Not prayer, but the word of God. And here again, not the simple reading of the word of God so that it only passes through our minds, just as water passes through a pipe. But consider what we read, pondering over it and applying it to our hearts. So let's do that. Let's read a piece of God's word and then use it in prayer in response. And so here are the words of the Lord's Prayer from the Bible. Father, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We've read God's word, and now we go into prayer, and we let this part of God's word influence our prayer. God, you are my Father, our Father. And so I praise you for being a loving heavenly Father, for dying on the cross for me, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. God, you are holy, and now I worship you as my Savior, my Lord. I worship you as the Lamb of God. And then, God, your will be done. And so show me your will in this illness. How can I use this illness for your glory? How can I keep connected to the people who love me and allow them into my life through this illness to be in their presence? Or God, you have blessed me greatly this day. How do you want me to bless others? What is your will? And then in the Lord's Prayer, there's the whole thing about trespasses and forgiveness. God, I ask for your mercy, for I am a sinner. I have sinned in these thoughts. I have sinned in these actions. Let me feel your forgiveness purchased for me on the cross. And God, I ask for mercy that I might forgive those who have hurt me, that I will forgive and forgive and forgive as you have forgiven me. God, your word talks about daily bread. And so we ask you for daily bread this day. Please supply me with clean air, with food, with friends, with faith, with a good nation. And the Lord's Prayer ends with deliver us from evil. 
And so pray to God, God, I am being tempted by this sin. Please deliver it from me. God, this is an evil in my life I need your help with. And so our prayers are influenced by reading God's word first. We pray for gratitude, we pray for help, we pray and intercede for other people. We pray confession, we pray as Jesus prayed, knowing that when we don't practice enough and we fail, his mercy and his grace is there for us. So continue reading the Gospel of John. If you already read it once, read it again. And look at the prayers, the different kinds of prayers that are there. Prayers that Jesus prayed for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We now stand for our time of prayer. Lord God, we come before you this day and we thank you for, once again, the hard work of all those fighting the fires around us. And we thank you for that little miracle of rain that saved running springs. We'd ask that you continue to be with the firefighters and we ask that you would get this fire and the other two large fires out and then give the people who are working on it a rest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We thank you, Lord God, for those who donated money to those in need during this fire season. And we thank you that we were able to help several families out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our schools as they uh, try to open up once again when it is safe. Uh, be with the local schools and our schools and give us the resources we need to continue to help Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for this troubled world and we ask for peace once again in the Ukraine, peace in Israel, peace in Africa. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Be with those in our church family who need your healing touch and hope. We pray once again for Renee and Bruce, for Carol and Tony, for Dave, and Judy and Lynn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the family of Nina Cochran at her passing from cancer. We thank you that you walk with her in this long journey and that you were with her when she died and that we as a church could say goodbye to her in her memorial service this weekend. Be with her family as they grieve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And we thank you, Lord God, for the gift of prayer, that in response to reading your word, we can talk to you, we can give you thanks and praise, we can take to you our sins and find forgiveness, we can give you glory and adoration. We thank you for this gift of prayer. We ask all these in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Parish announcements for today. Again, if uh, you've been affected by the fire and need some help, uh, give your church a call and we'll talk with you, pray for you, support you, uh, do whatever we can to get you through this uh, very difficult fire season. Again, want to thank all those who uh, made donations to help people in need. Uh, right now, uh, our biggest need is we need to, again, support our schools, our two preschools. We've continued to pay our school staff, uh, but that is about $9,000 a week. And so uh, we're looking for places in our church budget where we can take that from to help out our schools and then also in the school budgets. If that's something you'd like to help out with then, uh, just let us know. Uh, finally, uh, church announcements. Next weekend is a very special weekend here at Mount Calvary. The Concordia University Bell Choir will be here on retreat. And they will be performing at all three Sunday worship services, about a, a 10, 15 minute little uh, bell concert. 
So it's a great opportunity to invite your friends and bring them here to church to listen to this amazing musical group uh, that, again, blesses our community. Uh, this week, hopefully, all of our Bible studies and children's ministries and grief ministry will be up and going, God willing. So uh, keep us in your prayers. It is time now to leave this time of worship and focus upon that deep prayer life of Jesus and how God is calling us to a deep prayer life also. Receive God's blessings. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you.